In the last 10 years, there has been a trend for the nation's businesses to decentralize their operations away from major metropolitan areas. In 1954, only about one-third of the country's factories were located in rural areas. The number has now risen to more than half. In 1962, nine out of ten new factories built were located in small communities. As a result, business flying has more than doubled and accounts for almost half of all general aviation. These facts tell why the development of an airport may well be the best investment your community can make. We're in Dillon County, South Carolina. And this is the Dillon County Airport. Maybe this doesn't look like your idea of an airport, but if you were to ask anyone in these parts, particularly the businessmen, you'd find they'd all agree that it's just about the most valuable land in the whole county. How valuable? Well, here are two men who can tell you. Billy Carmichael, Dillon's mayor, and John Edwards, a member of the Dillon Chamber of Commerce. Here is someone else who has a good idea of an airport's value. His name is Robert Ames. He's never been in Dillon before, and wouldn't be here now if it weren't for the airport. Mr. Ames is looking for another plant site for his company. He liked what he heard about Dylan, and he decided to come down and look it over. We're at about the end of our spring rains right now. In another month or two, those fields over there will be full of cotton and tobacco. That property across the road would make a good plant site, too. And it's near the airport. Several pieces of land right near the airport here are available, and we'll show you some other good spots on our drive into town. There's a lot here that would attract a company. Good utilities, including plenty of water. Many beautiful locations that make it ideal for industry. And there are good roads serving all of them. Route 301, one of the busiest north and south highways, runs right through the center of the town. But Dillon's biggest asset has always been its people. Steady, hard-working people who made the county one of the most prosperous in the state. They're friendly people, too, and they take great pride in their town. The young people seem to feel the same way, and if most of them follow the example of their parents, they'll remain here. Dillon has good rail service. In fact, it is served by two different lines. Until recently, the opportunities offered were largely tied up in agriculture. But the exhibits in the bank show that today, there are many other ways one can make a comfortable living here. Mr. Ames, how are you, sir? Fine, sir. Come in and have a seat. Paul Sloan of Anderson's Bank is telling Mr. Ames how this came about. Mr. Ames, I guess we've always been interested in developing this area, but up until about 10 years ago, it seemed to be growing very well by itself. 
Then we discovered that although our farms were producing more, they were not using as many workers. A farm that once needed 15 or 20 men could now get by with three or four or less. This was mechanization coming to the farm. And Dillon being a farming area, our bank was first to feel this change. Local businessman F.M. White tells what happened next. We woke up one day to find that not only was business falling off in our stores, but that we had a man-sized unemployment problem. Then's when we decided to diversify to see if we couldn't attract additional industry for Dillon. Doug Blizzard, the editor of the semi-weekly Dillon Herald, remembers the town's early efforts to attract industry to the area. You know, it's funny. We always thought there was something special about Dillon. But when it came to selling it to people on the outside, the businessmen anyway, we never got anywhere. We were lucky to get them to come by and even take a look at the town. Of course, a few did come, and they seemed impressed. <laughs> but then they went away, and we never saw them again. There was only one exception in that first group of manufacturers, Mohasco Industries, one of the country's largest manufacturers of rugs. This is the inspection floor. You know, we wanted to build a plant down in this part of the country, and my job was to find the best location. Dylan really offered us almost everything we wanted. I had just one reservation, the problem of getting here by air. Most of our executives travel by plane, and they lose a lot of time if there is no airport near a plant. When we heard that Dillon County was planning to build an airport, that settled it as far as we were concerned. We've been here 10 years now, and our operation down here has been so successful that we've expanded this plant several times. All this is new. Down here, I'd like to show you the drying range. What finally stirred the town into action was the interest of another large national company, Burlington Mills. They were looking for a site to build a new hosiery mill. One of our first discussion with the local people here concerned air transportation facilities. I think it would be hard for our company to consider any locality that did not have an airstrip or an airport. I think that what really sold our people in Greensboro on Dillon as a site was not only the fact that they had the airstrip, but they gave us a, a site adjoining the airstrip for our plant. And you certainly can't get much closer than that. No, sir, you certainly can't. Burlington Selma plant and Dillon's airport were built about the same time. You see, folks around here had been talking for quite some time about building an airport, but everybody thought it was too big of a proposition for us to undertake. It took a lot of selling to convince some people that we really needed an airport, but once we had their support, the rest was easier than we expected. Engineers from the Federal Aviation Agency and the State Aeronautics Commission helped us select the site and assisted us with the plans and specifications for the size of airport we needed. And once we had applied for state and federal aid, our county delegation agreed to supply the balance. The total cost was just a little over $100,000, but with the federal government furnishing one half and the state government one fourth, the total cost to the county was $25,000, which included this rotation. According to local businessmen, Dillon got back all its investment with interest in less than a year. This is Doc Hyman's automobile agency. Working with him is his son, Charlie. 
Both are active in civic affairs and community projects. Those plant payrolls made a big difference. Normally, most of our business comes from regular customers who trade in their cars for new ones. But today, I notice new faces among our customers, some of whom have never even owned a car before. These new plants seem to have helped business. They certainly have. I can't tell you about the automobile business, but I can tell you they're definitely using a lot more gas and oil because my company distributes these products throughout the county. That's one of my stations over there. Ever since those plants moved to Dillon, my business has increased about 15% a year. And when we consider that there are only about 6,000 people in the town of Dillon, about 31,000 in the county as a whole, that's a pretty big increase. From what I hear, all other businesses are showing about the same rate of improvement. Your airport seems to have been a good investment. The best we ever made. I wasn't mayor here when all this began, but I have lived here all my life, and I can see what a difference these new interests have made. Not only have they put valuable new properties on our tax rolls, but they've increased the value of land and real estate, giving us a higher tax base. This makes it easier for us to build new roads and schools and improve our other community services. At the same time, by providing jobs for many of our people, it has saved the town a lot of money by cutting down on a welfare load that was beginning to strain the entire community. When you add up benefits like these, it's easy to understand why we consider our airport one of our most valuable community projects. The airport was hardly finished when Dillon began to find many other uses for it. For example, it gave aerial applicators or crop dusters a local base for their operations, making it easier for farmers to get this service whenever they needed it. In Mississippi, for example, crop dusting is the largest commercial aviation activity in the state. Today, you know, aerial application of pesticides and fertilizers is an important and steadily growing business in many areas particularly those that have large-scale farming. These planes can always provide better and more economical service when based right in the areas they serve. These same planes can also be used to locate lost livestock and to feed them when they're stranded. An airport also brings other advantages to the agricultural area. Since many farm communities are remote or isolated, airports make it possible for buyers and other businessmen to visit these communities more easily. Replacement parts for essential farm machinery can be flown in quickly thus reducing costly breakdown time that ordinarily might run into days. And by plane, many cities are within shopping distance. But apart from the many economic benefits, airports also make it possible for people in these areas to get services that most small communities don't ordinarily provide. By air, the more elaborate medical and hospital facilities of the larger cities are often only minutes away. Very often, isolated recreational areas can profit from an airport. By air, most of them can be reached quickly and easily. For many of these areas, an airport can make the difference between a marginal, struggling community or one that's prosperous and growing. And even the more successful summer communities, which may be inaccessible in winter, can expand their businesses and attract year-round vacationers if they can be reached by air. Some of the older industrial communities interested in attracting new industry, as well as providing better facilities for companies already there, are using airports as a focal point for their new industrial development. 
The kind of careful planning that has gone into this industrial air park concept shows how closely the community airport can be tied in with the local needs and aspirations. With the plants right at the airport, planes can actually deliver passengers or freight directly to the doors of plants. These progressive communities, recognizing the increasingly important role that aviation will play in industry, are now providing new industrial sites adjoining the airport. Carl Anderson, general manager of the Precision Meter Division of Honeywell Incorporated of Manchester, New Hampshire, can speak for most of our large companies. The Honeywell Precision Meter Division employs more than 350 people in Manchester, New Hampshire. Our products are electrical instruments which we produce for industry, for aviation, and for the space programs. The airport con location is a great convenience to us since it puts us within approximately two and one half hours flying time of more than one half of our potential market. Many of our customers themselves have plants which are located on airports so that this gives us essentially door-to-door -door transportation. In fact, the airport location is so important in our type of field that it makes it difficult to understand how we could operate effectively in this location and serving the markets which we sell to without having an airport available to us. In addition to all those who fly for business, there are also the thousands who fly simply for pleasure. And today, many communities are becoming more aware of the recreational role of airports. Wherever airports are available, flying has become a popular sport, not only for individuals, but for the entire family. A good part of this recreational or sport flying is done at private airports. Frequently, when these airports are sold for real estate developments, many people suddenly discover the value of a community airport. Often, the community airport is the result of the joint efforts of several communities. And when this happens, a larger and often more elaborate airport is needed to take care of their combined requirements. Although many of these airports are designed exclusively for general aviation, many others are built to accommodate the requirements of the scheduled airlines as well. Very few communities require airports of this type or size, but they serve to show the increasingly important role that general aviation plays in business today and the more elaborate facilities it often requires. The many kinds of general aviation aircraft we see at these airports and the fact that most of these aircraft are owned by companies and also the huge expenditure they represent show to what extent the airplane has become a business machine today. Here's a statement which may startle you, but it is absolutely true and has been for some years. The majority of the air traffic in the United States is business flying done in company-owned airplanes. Because of the increasing dependence of business on general aviation, the executive type general aviation airport plays an important role in the development of our great industrial and commercial centers. Conveniently located in the different communities that make up our large metropolitan areas, these airports make it possible for the businessman to fly directly to or close by the particular area he's visiting. He doesn't have to use the larger, more congested air carrier airports, which are sometimes less conveniently located. Generally, as the metropolitan area becomes larger, more airports of this type will be required. With general aviation activities running far ahead of air carrier service in many metropolitan areas, 
It's difficult to exaggerate the importance of this type of aviation and the role it can play in metropolitan development. His Honor, Mayor George Vavilus of St. Paul, member of the Minneapolis-St. Paul Metropolitan Airports Commission, has this to say about the airports in his area. As mayor, I am particularly concerned with the economic welfare of all air transportation in this area. But I am also concerned with the economic benefit that the taxpayers get out of every dollar that they invest in air transportation. In an effort to gauge the value of general aviation, we recently made a study to determine the impact it has had on the economy of our Minneapolis-St. Paul metropolitan area. This study revealed that general aviation aircraft bring in about $233 million a year in business, which we would not otherwise get, and that by 1975, this would increase to about $386 million a year. This means that every $1,000 of tax money we have invested in general aviation has produced more than $2 million in business. I think that any community that obtains $2 million from a $1,000 investment can safely say that it's money wisely invested. Today, the money that most communities put in general aviation is wisely invested. And it's not necessary for them to bear the entire cost. For, with the federal and usually the state governments participating, the community's share in some instances is as little as a fourth of the actual cost. By contacting its state aviation department or one of the Federal Aviation Agency Airport District offices, any community can have expert guidance and assistance both in evaluating its general aviation needs and planning and building the airport it requires to satisfy these needs. If a community appears in the National Airport Plan prepared by the Federal Aviation Agency, it is automatically eligible for assistance in planning and building its airport. However, even if a community does not appear in the present plan, it can still qualify for future aid to keep pace with the growth of general aviation, the National Airport Plan is revised every year and additional communities are constantly being added. Incidentally, there are over 40,000 business planes in the United States. The number is increasing at the rate of four to 5,000 per year. And those communities that have an adequate airport find it is being used more and more by these business planes. And so another important visitor has come to Dillon. And because of the airport, there will be more. Some just like Robert Ames, who liked what he saw here. The fact that these important visitors keep coming is proof enough for most people of Dillon that their airport is, in fact, the best investment they ever made.